Good morning. Welcome to worship at our Saviors this morning. Welcome to those of you who are in person. Uh, special welcome to those of you who are at home. I am Pastor Kiri Solberg. Pastor Maria is off this Sunday. This week has been all things graduation with her son Marcus. Uh, graduation and grad party. So we wish Marcus all the best as he prepares to uh, graduate and leave for college in the fall. Uh, if you are new to Our Saviors, we would love to connect with you. We have a connection card that you can complete either on our website under Connect. Do that on your phone also. Uh, we do have paper copies that are on the desk in the welcome, uh, in the rotunda as well. Well, this week we continue our 150th anniversary chapel events uh, with, sorry, our 150th anniversary events with an event at the chapel. That's how I meant to say it. So it is uh, a couple of things happening this Wednesday night. I am told that at 6 o'clock there is a scavenger hunt. This is not just for kids. This is for all ages. When's the last time anyone did a scavenger hunt, huh? Come and do the scavenger hunt at 6 o'clock on Wednesday with uh, kind of different highlights of what, what is with, uh, around the chapel and the grounds. And then at 7 o'clock, we have a worship service at 8 o'clock, the ice cream social. So please join. We hope for good weather on Wednesday night together. Um, then we, on Saturday, June 18th, we are having a pet blessing. Blessing of pets here at Our Saviors. That will be outdoors. If you have neighbors who love their pets, people you normally meet walking your dog, this is a great thing to invite them to. So bring your pet. There will be a blessing on Saturday. And then on Sunday, June 19th, it is our outdoor bluegrass worship service. Uh, if there is poor weather, we will just move everything right here inside. But remember, there's only one service at 930 that day. And then again, all ages, that Sunday we are doing a blessing of bicycles. So kids can bring bikes, grown-ups, you can bring your bikes. We just love blessing uh, that form of movement of people being out and seeing God's creation. And then finally, we do uh, have an announcement of the death of a member of our saviors. Hank Hansen passed away. His service will be tomorrow, Monday, here at our saviors, uh, 10 o'clock visitation and 11 o'clock funeral. Those are all the announcements I'm going to highlight. So I invite you to stand in your places and we will share God's peace with one another with a smile or a wave. That was lots of sharing the peace with Judy and me. We thank you. Uh, we join together for the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Lord our God, creator of all things. Amen. Trusting in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. God of all. Every living thing is precious to you, yet we have not treated them that way, from the smallest creature to our fellow humans. We have forgotten the lessons we learned as children. Forgive us, Lord. Remind us of the simple things Jesus taught, and by your Spirit, inspire us to speak and act with love and respect for all. With hope we pray. Amen. God's word brings good news better than any bumper sticker. You are part of God's creation. We all make mistakes and fall short. But in Christ, all things are made new. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Walk in newness of life. Amen. We join in our opening song.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy for the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy for your people here who have come to give you praise for the strength to live your word. Let us pray to the Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, help save. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, our world has so many things that need our attention. We simply cannot do it all. Turn us to you, focus our attention on you, and give us the peace that worshiping at your feet can give, but the world cannot. We give thanks you continue to call us to live for you. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. The reading is Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms potters. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. 
The God of Jacob is our refuge. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel is from Luke 10, the 38th, from the gospel of Luke, the 10th chapter. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Wow, that was the first time I've seen that too. <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> well, how about that? Our uh, new sermon series is called Simplify, Calming the Chaos. So we will now come together as we seek how Jesus leads us as we calm the chaos. Uh, well, school is, talk about chaos. School is out for pretty much everyone as of last week. We have some heat coming this week, uh, and we're still increasing the amount of daylight every day. So that all means what season is here? Summer, summer. What are your desires for summer? What do you look forward to? What are your hopes for this summer? As we were settling on a sermon series to start our summer, our conversation narrowed in on our shared desires. Time to relax, to breathe, to enjoy downtime with family and friends. In a word, the hopes for summer were to simplify. So we're starting this series hoping that you might share these desires and that in giving ourselves permission to simplify, we might have time and space for greater connection with ourselves, with one another, and with God. This likely isn't a new concept or maybe even a new desire for many of us, but perhaps this series might be an encouragement and a nudge towards something that's already been laid upon your heart. I have made it no secret that I'm at a busy stage of life. My husband, Previn, and I are two working parents with a lot of job responsibilities. We have two busy teens who do not yet drive themselves. We're involved in community organizations, and we have family obligations, including parents moving into the stage of life where more help is needed. If you sometime ask me the question, how are you, and you get a blank stare, I want to tell you what's going on in here. You see, my gut response is to say busy, or maybe crazy busy. But it's also not the response I want to give. I'm someone who works in the arena of spiritual lives and building community, and I know that when my primary identifier is busy, it's not healthy for myself or for my relationships, and by extension, the community. I don't want to have a life identified by my frenetic pace and obligations, though that seems to be the season I'm in. So if you ask me that question and I just stare, 
I'm probably trying to think of an answer other than busy. Can you tell this series is going to be as much preaching to myself as it is to all of us? Well, let's explore what simplifying might mean, knowing this is a walk we will do together. Please know that this isn't going to be a course on cleaning out your closets or organizing your calendar. As we talk about simplified living in this space, it's going to be understanding that God made us as human beings, not human doings. Simplified living is about ordering our lives according to the design of our creator. Our souls were meant to live and thrive and be in connection with God. And that's why we're starting with the idea, today's theme is being. Our scripture for today has been one that has been known to pit being against doing. And that, I will tell you, has never sat well with me. I give thanks to my friend, Pastor Elizabeth Johnson, for her take on this story. Mary and Martha are two sisters who learn that Jesus is coming to visit them. Jesus arrives in Bethany, and Martha demonstrates hospitality by welcoming Jesus into the home she shares with her sister Mary. She then busies herself with the tasks of serving her, their guest. The New Testament word is called diakonian, which means serving or ministering. And although we're not told precisely what those tasks are, a good guess is that she began preparing a meal. Meanwhile, her sister Mary sits at Jesus' feet, listening to his words. Rather than assuming the expected role of women in her culture, she takes her place at the feet of Jesus. She assumes the posture of a student listening at the feet of a rabbi, a role traditionally reserved for men. This pleasant story takes a sharp turn when Martha, distracted by her many tasks, comes to Jesus and asks, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. Many who read or hear this story may cheer for Mary in her inversion of traditional roles. Many also empathize with Martha's resentment of her sister for leaving her to do all the work. Jesus' response to Martha seems less than empathetic, chiding her for distraction and worry and praising Mary. Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The problem with Martha is not that she is busy serving and providing hospitality. Certainly, Jesus commends this kind of service to the neighbor many times, notably in the parable of the Good Samaritan that immediately precedes this story of Mary and Martha. The problem with Martha is not her serving, but rather that she is worried and distracted. The word translated distracted has the connotation of being pulled or dragged in different directions. <laughs> Sound familiar? Anyone else? Martha's distraction and worry leave no room for the most important aspect of hospitality, gracious attention to the guest. Martha's worry and distraction prevent her from being truly present with Jesus and cause her to drive a wedge between her sister and herself and between Jesus and herself. As you can tell, this is a tough one for me to see and hear because I so relate to Martha. But what if this? What if Jesus' words to Martha are seen as an invitation rather than a rebuke? Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. What if the invitation to Martha is to receive the gracious presence of Jesus, to listen to his words, to know that she is valued not for what she does or how well she does it, but for who she is as a child of God? Can you perhaps breathe and settle into that invitation? I think I can. 
In our culture of hectic schedules and relentless pursuit of productivity, we are so tempted to measure our worth by how busy we are, by how much we accomplish, or by how well we meet the expectations of others. But our faith tells us that our worth is our identity as a child of God, that we are loved for simply being. I do want to say that much of our busyness and distraction stems from the noblest of intentions. We want to provide for our families. We want to give our children every opportunity to enrich their lives. We want to serve our neighbors, and yes, we want to serve the Lord. Indeed, where would the church be without its Marthas, those faithful people who perform the tasks of hospitality and service so vital to making the church a welcoming and a well-functioning community. And yet, if all our activities leave us with no time to be still in the Lord's presence and hear God's word, we are likely to end up anxious and troubled. We're likely to end up with a kind of service that's devoid of love and joy and is resentful of others. I take heart to see that both listening and doing, receiving God's word and serving others in the story of Mary and Martha are vital to the Christian life, just as inhaling and exhaling are to breathing. Yet how often do we forget to breathe in deeply? Trying to serve without being nourished by God's word is like expecting good fruit to grow from a tree that's already been uprooted. Curiously, this story in Luke is left suspended. We don't know what happened next. Whether Mary and Martha were reconciled, whether they were all able to enjoy the meal that Martha had prepared, whether Martha was finally able to sit and be filled in the presence of Jesus. We do know that Jesus invites all of us who are worried and distracted by many things to sit and rest in his presence, to hear his words of grace and truth, to know that we are loved and valued as children of God, and to be renewed in faith and strengthened for service. Well, today, in this first Sunday of our Simplify series, as we focus on being, what better than to practice this together? There are two first things in which I want to invite you to practice being, and congratulations, you are already engaged in the first one. It's worship. On this first day of the week, show up here or online and be with God's people. Now, if you are here or online, you already did this one today, so turn to someone next to you and give them a thumbs up or an okay sign and say, nicely done, way to go. Or if you're online, you guys can hit the like button or enter a thumbs up symbol in the chat. There you go. For many people, worship centers us. It creates a touch point to start our week by being with God and God's people. This has been an ancient practice of God's people. In the Old Testament, it was on Saturday, a Sabbath, and in the New Testament, it was moved to Sunday to celebrate the resurrection. What if for the next four weeks you commit to being present for worship, either here or online, or if you can't Sunday morning, create some sacred space and worship online at a later time. So four weeks, that's through this Simplify series. The other first is this. The first thing each day, be with God. Sometimes this is done through practices called meditation or mindfulness. Sometimes it's in the form of devotions. Whatever practice works for you, the most important is to regularly take some time and space to breathe and be with God. Well, we're going to practice one form today called meditation. The benefits of meditation are touted not only in the spiritual realm, but have you seen this? More and more in the medical and wellness realms as well. 
Studies are showing these ancient practices really do make a difference and help us to live better. So I'm going to stop talking and we'll practice just being. We've done this in worship from time to time, and today I want to be sure to give you the space to just be, and then you can carry it on the rest of the days this week. So for this meditation, make sure you're sitting comfortably. I will be our timer for today, but at home you'll want to have your own timer. We're going to do one minute of meditation, and it will be to listen. You'll clear your mind, and I'll invite you to focus on your breathing. Noticing when your breath comes in and goes out. Thoughts may come, and when they do, simply note them and return to your breathing. At home, you can start with one minute, and then as you're ready, expand to three minutes, or five, or ten. The most important thing, remember, is to just create the space for being. So I invite you to take a deep breath in and exhale and we'll begin. Let's come back together. And you have now completed both first things, being with God and being with God's people. Remember, God created us to be human beings, not human doings. If your soul feels overwhelmed, exhausted, or dissatisfied, know there is another way. You are invited to simplify and spend some time just being. That you might be restored in connection with yourself and your community and with God. I'm going to commit to this practice and I hope you'll join me. And then maybe the next time if you ask me the question, how are you? My answer will be breathing deeply. How about you? Thanks be to God. Amen. Just Lord, that we 
Please stand as you're able, as we confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gathered together as children of God, let us pray for the healing of God's world. Gracious God, <clears throat> help us make space to encounter you and your people regularly. May we practice the ways of simply being in the coming weeks. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, you rejoice in creation and have given humankind responsibility for the works of your hands. Instill in us all your spirit of care for the earth, that we might be good stewards of resources and of your creation. Lord, in your mercy. Your Loving God, you delight in the human race. Move the hearts of world leaders to seek wisdom, speak truth and care for all endangered by poverty, prejudice, or violence. Move leaders of places at war toward peace, especially in Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for those who go out to see you at work in the world and to participate in serving others. This week, we ask your blessings and care for the 6th through 8th grade youth and chaperones traveling to Duluth for their mission trip. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comforting God, you call out to all who live. Grant hope to those who are experiencing fear, pain, or grief. Especially we pray for Ryan DeYoung, Rob Wachter, Rick, Al, Randy Kozier, Randy Hill Jr., Pat Nelson, Mary Kay, Lucinda, Laverne Johnson, Debbie Cook, David Kappelhoff, Sherry, and Brendy, Brenda Varney. Lord, we pray for Gwen Thomas and Mike on the death of Gwen's sister, Colette, and for the families of Henry Hansen and Jill Jarvie as they grieve their loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gather all of our prayers into your wide embrace, most gracious God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. It is uh, time for us to consider our offerings, so I remind you that we have various ways to give. If you are here in person, you can place your offering in the baskets on the stands as you leave this morning. Uh, online or at or even here, you can give by mailing in a check. You can text a dollar amount to the number on the screen, or you can give through the Our Savior's website. Let's pray and give thanks to God for all these gifts that make ministry here possible. Merciful God, everything in heaven and earth belongs to you. We joyfully release what you have entrusted to us. May these gifts be signs of our whole lives returned to you, dedicated to the healing and unity of all creation, through Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, it is time for Holy Communion. So I uh, remind you that you can choose to commune either by coming forward for intinction or you can commune in your uh, seats. If you would choose to do that and you need a communion kit, go ahead and wave your hand and the ushers can bring one to you if you weren't able to get one earlier. Or you can jump back and get one yourself as well. I'll give us a few more instructions about the flow again just before we start. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. 
It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who calls us to follow his way of humble service and love. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. he was betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me we join together as we pray the Lord's Prayer our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, just a few uh, quick notes about how communion will work. We'll be serving by intinction at two stations. The servers will begin with the middle sections, and then the servers will move over, and we'll get you over there, the side section. Um, once the servers are ready at the front of your section, we'll kind of give you a nod, and you're invited to come forward row by row. The ushers will not be dismissing. Um, center sections, you'll come up the center and go back on the sides. Side aisle, uh, you'll come along the wall and then back up that same aisle. Uh, you can choose to use the hand sanitizer that's on the stands as you come forward. If you need a gluten-free wafer, please pick that up yourself from the cup that is also on the stand. And for uh, if you're receiving regular wafers, you will step to the server. We will drop it into your hands, touch free, and then you'll step to the server holding the chalices. There are two choices. The wine is red and the white is grape juice. Dip your wafer and then uh, eat as one. If you eat your wafer before dipping, that's okay. Go ahead and eat that one and we'll just give you another one to dip. Uh, you can return to your seats by the other aisle. So for those of you who are communing in place or who are communing at home, you can open your kits and receive communion as you hear these words. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. I invite the communion servers forward.
Please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, you have fed us at your holy table. Send us now, strengthened by this meal, to live out our faith, breaking down divisions, building bridges of understanding, speaking out with courage, and serving others as we follow our servant Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. And receive the blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, guide you, and inspire you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. We will. Thanks be to God.